Hi everyone, this is John Kay. How you doing? Just wanted to show you a little experiment I did with uh, a little bit of iron pyrite, uh, just to show you what um, John Bedini was was talking about on the crystal battery thread on Energetic Forum. So basically, what I've got here is I've got a, a digital multimeter that's set on millivolt range, a microamp meter that goes from zero to 100 microamps, bowl of water, which is just uh, filtered rainwater. I've got this piece of iron pyrite here, which I bought from the crystal shop a while ago. This is the same piece that I showed in that other video. Um, another piece of iron pyrite, which has uh, been milled to a cube. And a copper coated welding rod. So what we're going to show here first is I'm going to connect up uh, the iron pyrite rock. Just use this clip lead here, Let's sit it on the bench there. It's a little hard to get a good, good connection on it with the lead. And just keep an eye on the meters as I probe around the rock. So you can see there, not much. Okay, there I get a little bit. I get about 20 microamps for about 40 millivolts. Uh, there I get about 10 microamps, 27 millivolts. So depending on where I where I poke the lead around. Okay, without touching it with my fingers or anything to disturb the, the meter. Okay, so that's the iron pyrite rock. I'm just going to set that aside. Uh, the milled iron pyrite, see what that does. Obviously, there's nowhere to clip this, but um, see if I touch that with the, you know, the meters, there's pretty much nothing there. That's almost like a dead short. Okay, so just to show you the difference between the two rocks. And the piece of uh, copper coated welding rod, absolutely nothing there as well. Okay. So the next thing I want to show is what I'm going to do now is uh, clip this lead back on again and I'm going to drop this in this bowl of water just like that just let it sit there and once again we'll get our other clip lead we'll just touch it to you know, points in the rock uh, once again depending on where I'm probing I'm not touching the water with the lead here yeah, you know, I get a little bit here and there. That's probably about the best I got there, about 10 microamps, about 20 millivolts. But watch what happens as soon as I touch the lead, just drop it in the water like that. So all of a sudden we're up to 30 microamps, about 52 millivolts. And depending on where in the bowl I place the lead, depends on what the meter shows. Okay, once again, on the outside, now the lead's actually all wet. Um, I still get about the same, depending where I probe around. Okay. So you can see there's uh, you know, not much power there, but enough to show you that just with the iron pyrite and the rock, we, we do get some power, particularly if it's wet. So the next thing I'm going to do is show, I'll just put that aside there. I'm going to drop the uh, iron pyrite cube into the bowl like that. Once again, We'll touch the, the meter lead to one side of the rock. I'll, I'll get around here so you can see. Okay, put the probe in the water and we get a little bit there. So not as much as the rock, probably because the rock's a lot bigger in size, but it does show you that there is some power there. Okay, and just for the sake of the experiment, we'll drop the uh, the iron welding rod in there as well. See what happens with that. We get a tiny, tiny little bit, maybe one or two microamps, very little. Okay. Now, for my next trick, what I'm going to do is connect up the iron pyrite rock again to my clip lead. Okay, and drop him in the water bowl of water just like that. This time I'm going to take the copper coated welding rod, attach it to the other clip lead and I'm just going to dip it in the water. Okay, just like this. Now watch what happens. 
See that meter going up? 70, 80 microamps, 140 millivolts. And again, depending where in the bowl I've got the welding rod, depends on how much. If I touch touch the rock with the rod, you know, I get a little bit, drop it in the water like that, not touching it with anything else, and you can see the microamps actually increasing. And I'm not, not even touching it. And it's not touching the rock either. So almost 90 microamps there, about 154 millivolts. So again, not a lot of power, but it does show you just in this demonstration that you know the water is is doing what John says it does. It's acting as a almost like a semicon semiconductor and and getting power there. So I guess um, you know what he says is true. You could probably make a you know make a battery out of this and and power some some LEDs or something like that. As long as you've got water there, it should work. Okay. Just for the last experiment, I just want to drop the uh, the cube iron pyrite in the, in the in the pond. Uh, now you'll see what happens as I touch the water. I get what I did before, about 30 microamps, uh, depending on where I am in the bowl. If I actually touch it to the iron pyrite. I get about the same so there's no no real gain just by using a similar metal okay um, so again drop that in there drop that in the water I get some some energy there if I touch the iron pyrite I actually get a little bit less in some points if I drop that there so just to show you this one again copper coated welding rod, it's not even pure copper um, I haven't got any magnesium so I can't show you that but um, you just drop that in the water and you can see the microamps just build up and build up very very interesting alright, thanks for watching, cheers, see ya